Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast of Shemaine's Model Health for those looking to optimize their long term health and weight goals. I am your host. I am Shemaine Laney. I'm a biohacker, fitness and nutrition expert and certified iridologist, amongst other things. But the iridologist part is going to come into action today. I hope you're all keeping really well on this beautiful June morning. And this morning's episode, we're going to look at what your eyes can tell you about your health. Over the last few weeks, I did an episode on what your tongue can tell you, and I did one on what your nails can tell you. So if you want to start picking up on these signals that your body's given you, um, do go back and check them out. So before we go on, I must emphasize that the information in these podcasts is for informational purposes only and not to be taken as medical advice. Please do consult your health practitioner before you make any lifestyle changes. Okay, so this week we're looking at your eyes Um, and eyes is something that's always interested me. Uh, Many of us have heard the saying that the eyes are the windows to the soul, which I believe is somewhat true, but the eyes are definitely the window to the brain. Um, And of course, I'm going to take this a little bit more sciencey before I get into the iridology part. With the brain, when we think of the eyes, the eyes are a window or a way for us to get light into our brain, especially first thing in the morning when we get direct sunlight into our brain. That sunlight goes through um, our ocular lens and it hits what's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is like our master clock or our master regulator for all the other clocks that are throughout our body. So every system, every organ has its own clock and when it starts ticking, then an order of events happens, hormones are released, functions happen and so on. But when we wake up in the morning and we get direct sunlight, we hit the super charismatic nucleus, which is our master clock, which signals our main circadian rhythm, which of course we know associates with our sleep. This is why it's so important to get sunlight first thing in the morning through your eyes. It also sets up our hormonal rhythm. So we get our cortisol and as the day goes by, Um, That circadian rhythm, that master clock, then signals other hormones to be released right down to the evening where we have our melatonin kick in and we're set up for a good night's sleep. So it's very, very important. Um, But the eyes are wondrous things. When we look at health, we can see by looking at the eyes what may be going on of course we have different conditions like cataracts and macular degeneration and then when maybe you might go to see your physician or an optometrist they might recognize some other trends or issues going on with your eyes so um, just an example of some of them with diabetes we can see diabetes can present itself in the eyes with poor vision or poor night vision Um, so blurring vision as well can be connected with those spikes and troughs of insulin and sugar Um, high cholesterol we can see in the eyes what it'll look like or your optometrist will recognize a gray or a white ring around the cornea so the cornea is that clear film or the surface that covers the eyeball Um, another one is liver disease so yellow in the whites of the eyes so that's in the sclera of the eyes and um, stroke can be seen in the eyes where you might get temporary loss of vision or maybe double vision Um, and then vitamin a deficiency as well can represent in the eyes with night blindness so an issue seeing in the night too and those are just some generic issues um, that we might see when we get our eyes checked or a doctor looks in our eyes but moving on to iridology so which would be where I pay most of my attention and just as a side note some of you may have heard of sclerology so 
iridology in itself is the study of or the art or the science of analyzing the iris of the eye so that is the colored part of your eye around your pupil whereas sclerology is the study of the whites of the eye um, both are very interesting topics, but I decided to go into iridology first because I've always been fascinated with the color of my eyes and I have a dark ring around the outside of my iris that I always thought was unusual when I looked at my siblings and my parents and I kind of had a curiosity as to what it was about. So when we look into iridology, it is somewhat of a controversial field as every topic is, but I still feel quite interesting to many people, especially as many of us move towards more of a holistic, natural approach to health. Um, and practitioners around the world have spent centuries examining the correspondences between certain iris features and human physiology and psychology. So iridology is widely used around the world and has been for a very long time by herbalists and homeopaths and other natural practitioners to assist them in discovering an individual's predisposition to certain conditions or where there might be weaknesses. So simply stated, iridology, the study of the iris, can tell us a great deal about the state of health of an individual, but doesn't indicate specific disease. Um, so iridology can tell us the condition of the tissue, but it doesn't specify exactly what's happening. In my opinion, iridology is an add-on. It's not a standalone practice. I mean, it could be, but from my opinion, it's an add-on to an already existing practice of natural health or um, nutritionalism or orthomolecular nutrition or even biohacking as I do it. So it's an addition, it's an extra, it's an extra tool to use to help figure out or narrow down what might be going on where you might have some indices to what's going on with say a client, then you take a look at their eyes and what we would call um, a session, then you can help kind of narrow down or slightly confirm what may be going on. So firstly, I'm going to give you just some insight, some very basic insight into iridology. The parts I feel are the easiest to understand and are going to be most useful for you when trying to figure out what might be going on with your health. So at the color of the eye first. There's many, many, many opinions in this area. If you Google this, you're going to come up with the color charts, the eye color pyramids, loads of opinion on what's the most dominant and what's not. Um, but most iridologists will agree that there are three basic constitutional colors to the iris. So brown, hazel and blue. Um, and then all the other colors we see are simply permutations of these three colors. Um, and the color can play a big part in the constitution of a person. So whether or not someone has a strong or weak constitution, how the color looks, there is also a lot of research and studies. You can check them out on PubMed. There's a lot of articles um, on how the color of your eye may be directly connected to personality traits and characteristics. I posted an article on my Facebook business page, so Shemaine's Model Health, um, on Tuesday, I believe it was. And it was super interesting um, just to just to read it and it addressed the article was from like 1988 I believe it was the Chicago Times and what the author looked at in the article was um, the history of eye color in American presidents and it was super interesting to see the majority of American presidents through history up to 1988 had blue or bluish gray eyes. Um, and then when you, if you Google a lot of what eye color do so-and-so successful person have or the most successful people in the world have, there does seem to be 
a trend or a dominance in blue eye color there and I'm not saying if you have blue eye colors that you're going to be super successful but I am saying it is interesting to look at it um, and there's also a trend as well with brown eye colors of being um, very creative and open and successful too it's it's interesting to look at that um, but when we look at the eye color specifically, so when you get up close to the eye, maybe you're using one of our special lenses that we use in iridology, or you can even zoom in on your iris. I always ask someone to sit in front of a window where there's natural light, and if they can zoom in then, or just take a picture of their iris and then send it to me. Um, that way the natural light helps just brighten up all the fibers of the iris. But when we look at the fibers of the iris, so those lines or treads that go through the iris, they're called um, sphincter muscles and they're formed by many fibers. But when we look at those, we can see if a person may have a strong constitution or not. So having a strong constitution, we'd see these fibers they're tighter, they're close together, and they're straighter. Um, so people with a strong constitution or these fibers can get away with a lot more than people with loose fibered irises. So what that means is having a strong constitution, you're less susceptible to illness and weakness and stuff like that. Again, these are just guidelines. I don't want anyone to look at their iris and think, oh my God, I'm weak. But these are, they're interesting guidelines. So people with those straight, tight, closer knit fibers within the iris, think of them like threads when you look at your eye in the mirror. That can, in some people, signify a con strong constitution. And I do believe that you will know, though, if that's accurate or not. You will know if you're like, hey, I don't really get sick that often. Like, that's pretty accurate. The next one I think is easiest for you to kind of figure out when you look in the mirror yourself is toxicity. And this came up with a client this week and um, she sent me pictures of her eyes and I was like, you know, that does signify that there's a lot of toxicity or toxic buildup in your gut. Uh, and she mentioned that her mom had it and blah, blah, blah. Um, but it, this is a simple way to kind of not self-diagnose, but self-see if maybe you have toxic overload from anywhere from the stomach right down to the colon and even into the bloodstream. But when you look at your iris, this is the area around the pupil um, has a direct connection in aridology to the intestines and the colon. Now, when you look at that, if you see that that coloring in there is the same as the rest of your eye, then you have no problem. Um, but any other color can represent toxicity. So the most common colors of toxins are going to be brown, orange, and yellowish tint. Most of the time we see orangey tints coming out looks like it's coming out from the iris in that area that represents toxicity and the further out it goes towards the edge of the iris the more toxic load you have in your body that is reaching more parts of your body so it's not just in the gut it's now spreading to other parts of your body but that's something interesting if you look in your eyes and you see the yellow or orange so if you've blue or green eyes this can be very easy to see um, that can signify that toxic overload um, if you are concerned, I don't mean to scare anyone, if you're concerned at all, do message me or email me and I will give you some advice. The next one is the autonomic nerve wreath. Some people will have heard of this and some people won't. Um, the autonomic nerve wreath can usually be seen very easily. Um, it is a landmark for most optologists and iridologists. Um, the, uh, it represents the autonomic nervous system. So it's important when you look at your pupil, the autonomic nerve reach should be about one third of the way out from the pupil. Um, you'll see a clear difference between the areas of the intestines that I talked about. They may look smoother, though 
those fibers and then you hit the autonomic nerve wreath and from there on out now the fibers may look a bit more um, unusual or jagged or different. So that autonomic nerve wreath directly connects to our central nervous system and it can tell us if someone is experiencing a lot of stress, if the body is experiencing a lot of stress, um, if the person is internalizing a lot of stress and we can see that the autonomic nerve root there would thicken and kind of raise off the surface. surface. If the autonomic nerve root is very prominent it does tell us that it is irritated in some way. So we start to look at the central nervous system, start to look at blood sugar, start to look at adrenal issues, start to look at sleep, stuff like that. But that is something that you can look at yourself. So you can look and you can see, have I got orange? Have I got toxic overload? You can look and you can see, is my autonomic nerve wreath, does it look elevated or more prominent or does it look pretty calm and relaxed? Um, Next, I wanted to kind of give you in another little insight into some very basic visual stuff that you can see in the mirror. So the lymphatic rosary has always fascinated me um, because I have a few family members that actually have this. And as pretty as it looks, I know it's not an optimal um, position for the body to be in. So the lymphatic rosary is... It was named because it kind of looks like rosary beads going around the edge of the iris. So these are going to look like little white spots or small bead-like markings that go around the outside of, um, not the outside of the iris, just towards the edge of the iris. Um, and the, the location of these spots or these beads, they can indicate an area in the body where there may be issues with lymph nodes or lymph fluid or poor circulation or stuff like that. Um, the more spots you have, the more you're going to connect it to poor circulation and lymphatic congestion. So here we'd look at like the detoxification and the cleansing systems of the body, moving lymph fluid. Um, making sure circulation is happening, making sure we're supporting our detoxification systems, lots of herbs, stuff like that. But that's interesting. So if you look at an eye and you see just towards the edge of the iris, there are white dots or beads, or it looks like um, a rosary chain going around, that can signify that lymphatic rosary. And we'd be looking more there at the lymphatic system overall. The next one, many people have this, and it can come and go depending on how you're taking care of your health. So it's called the scurf ring. So the scurf ring um, can be seen as a darkening on the outer edge of the iris. So th that dark line that I was talking to you about that I have, that is known as the scurf ring. So if it looks like your iris has its own border, so the dark ring, this is the scurf ring. And the scurf ring represents a degree of potential for again the skin to breathe or not breathe properly so it can be connected again to that whole circulation system um, and the health of the tissues overall in the body not just the skin but the internal um, so when we see the scurf ring, so that black line, we consider the health of the skin. You should also take into consideration um, the colon, the lungs, and the kidneys because they're going to obviously impact what comes out to our skin as well. And when we look at this next aspect of the iris, which connects directly to circulation as well, if you see the sclera, remember I said that's the wide of the eye, if you see it somewhat overlaps into the iris, creating a hazy kind of non-distinct edge to the iris, a circulation problem associated with that area of the body is generally indicated. 
so one of the most common and I saw this in my client's eyes the other day areas for this lack of circulation is for the hairs for the brain so you may see if you pull up your eyelid a bit that the top of your iris seems more hazy or blurred so that's that circulation that is blood flow to the brain people who experience a lot of brain fog irritability headaches migraines may see this but also toxic overload can play a part here so if you have a lot of heavy metals or toxins built up inside your head or your brain it can represent here so that would be something that I would look at so per Circulation in this area is represented in what we know in iridology as the arc of senility. Uh, some people will go back to the Latin arc of senilis, but that's what this kind of arc at the top of the eye here is called. Poor memory can be impacted here again. Um, that brain fog, irritability, all due to the poor blood flow, lack of oxygen to the brain. And then I definitely would take a look at toxic overload. And that is something that is an addition to what I already do. Generally, if you just go to see a neurologist, they will not consider toxic overload in the brain, like heavy metals and stuff. And that comes back to that where I said iridology can be used as an add-on to something you may already be practicing. Okay, I mentioned cholesterol at the start of this and how we can see cholesterol through that white film on the cornea of the eye. So the cholesterol ring, as it's called in iridology, um, it does look very similar to that poor circulation ring, but I mean, you can see there is a distinct difference if you have a close look. So it'll look like a cloud over the edges of the iris so it's not more of a blend of the iris into the white or haziness it's a cloud over the iris so it's like floating in the cornea and it's usually just above the outer edge of the iris and that indicates um, cholesterol sodium and even some other mineral issues deposited in certain parts of the body that we would want to take a look at we can also see this cloud um, can somewhat represent glucose imbalances so that would bring us to looking at metabolic syndrome and we know most of the time when we see cholesterol issues there is some sort of metabolic issue so that would make a lot of sense so we'd be looking at not only triglycerides um, nutrition insulin resistance we'd be looking at a lot here but that cholesterol ring is super interesting so the last one I'm going to leave you with because it's going on a bit and these all you can take note of these go back write them down and then look in the mirror and take note of what you see um is the ring of repentance it sounds like something out of purgatory um if you believe in that but the ring of repentance or repentance ring as some call it um this is where we see the cholesterol ring that I just spoke about, so the cholesterol cloud, but it starts to come in from the outside of the iris inwards, causing the appearance of a ring just inside the periphery of the iris, so the edges of the iris. So when you look at your eyes, you will see, let's just say you have that black ring, the scurf ring like I have, and maybe just inside that you start to see a white cloud shift inwards towards the pupil that is the repentance ring and that again we'll connect to cholesterol but also as that starts to clear up we can see we're on the right path and we're starting to heal up the body and stuff like that well i hope you found this very interesting i'm going to leave it at this because it can be quite overwhelming but you combine the information in this with the other two podcasts on the tongue and the nails and you're going to be able to take a look at yourself and narrow down what may be going on with your health if you have any questions about any of this or if you decide to take some pictures of your eyes and take notes 
and you want my opinion on it, you can email me through my website, so that's Shemaine's Model Health, or you can message me through Facebook or Instagram, and that again is Shemaine's Model Health. Um, I'll take a look at what you're saying and I'll give you uh, some feedback on what I see. But, but for sure, if you're going to take pictures of your eyes or your irises, you would want to be looking straight out a bright window take a picture of your eye but do lift the eyelid up enough that I can see the whole iris and the whole eyeball and you can send me pictures of those with any notes or anything you may see and I'd be happy to get back to you otherwise enjoy the sun have a fabulous day um, and I will speak to you all soon as always please do share with anyone you feel may find this interesting or benefit and the biggest compliment you can give me is a review if you have a minute to do so I really would appreciate it it helps my podcast and my work reach a lot more people and also educate a lot more people okay have a great day and I'll speak to you soon bye bye